covering the Northern Bahamas? You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. There is a new queen wearing the crown of Miss Grand Bahama. A queen was crowned during the pageant in October but has since resigned. Tonight we will meet the new Miss Grand Bahama who says she's ready to begin her reign. Meet your new reigning 2018-2019 Miss Grand Bahama, 17-year-old Evna Gibson. Following the resignation of the previous queen, Gibson assumed the position and says she is looking forward to her new role as queen as she serves this island and country. My platform is entitled Empowering Youths to Pursue Excellence. My main focus and mission is for my youth to do more, be more, love more, value more and to give more. As she encourages young people to pursue excellence, she shares this bit of advice. Self-empowerment is taking control of your own life, your life settings, your goals and positive choices. It's basically understand who you are as an individual, self-evaluation. Two, education. Once there was once a successful man who said education is the most empowered most powerful weapon used around the world, Nelson Mandela. It must basically saying that you must have education to have a better way of living. If you don't, you fail. Official host April Crothergau says that they are pleased to have Gibson as a part of the prestigious organization. We've had doctors pass through our organization, lawyers, accountants, television personalities, and business leaders. So we're very happy that their year of development continues to a lifetime of achievement and success. We hope our new Miss Grand Bahama uses this platform to encourage other young ladies and be a role model. The recent graduate says she's already planning her next move. My new step is to actually have my own mime dance organization, a workshop by the way. To, for boys and girls ages from 8 to 15 and to let them know that dance is not only to impress, it's to express. Gibson will now prepare to compete in the Miss Coffee pageant in Colombia. Megan Shepard, Stedden S, Network News. Switching gears now for the past 11 years, the second Saturday in September has been recognized as Caribbean Wellness Day by the CARICOM Heads of Government Summit. However, this is the first year that the Grand Bahama Health Services has taken part in the activities. This morning, a special health fair was held on the grounds of the 8 Mile Rock Community Clinic to sensitize Grand Bahamians on the importance of health lifestyles. Assistant Director of Communications Valeria Burroughs notes that this year's theme, Love Thy Body, Preserving the Workforce, emphasizes the importance of healthy employees to the success of any corporation. We recognize that the workforce encompasses the age range of 18 to 65, which is a huge chunk of our population. We need to keep ourselves healthy. We tend to work daily without um, taking care of our bodies. We neglect to take care of the health of our bodies. And so we want to sensitize the public that in order for our companies to be successful, in order for our businesses to be productive, in order for us as human beings to be productive, we must take care of ourselves. Let's eat healthy, exercise daily. Daily, do whatever it, it takes to, to take care of ourselves. And so the hospital is healthier, speaks to, healthier speaks to. Well, Senior Assistant Hospital Administrator Dixie Jones says that a number of vendors will be on premises to share vital information with the general public. It's always held on the second Saturday of every September. We decided to move it a little bit by one day so we could capture some of the school children. Now it is a busy time for them being their first day back, but we do have some now. They're inside the clinic doing some other stuff, but we do have some schools who have committed to come out. It's really just to make us more aware of how we should be living because most of our illnesses, as we know, are lifestyle issues. And so it's to show them a little of how to make juices. We have a, a juice seeing um, booth here. We have the HIV AIDS because we want to prevent that as well. And we have alkaline water. We have a few restaurants that are going to come out a little later tell you about healthy foods and such. And now it is time to ask the doctor. Welcome. 
They would like to continue our discussion of bedwetting, particularly in children seven years and older. As far as treatment options, you can purchase a bedwetting alarm. However, in many cases, this alarm can wake parents rather than children, and you may have to wake your child and send them to the bathroom until the alarm begins to wake them. In extreme cases, medications can help control it, which is a discussion you should have with your child's doctor. There are several kinds of bedwetting. Today I will discuss the first type, which is called primary nocturnal enuresis, which means the child has never had nighttime control. In other words, they have always wet the bed at least two times a month. This can be caused by underdeveloped bladder muscles, producing too much urine, sleeping too deeply to register the feeling of needing to urinate or perhaps even the slow development of the nerves that register when the bladder is full. A discussion with your child's pediatrician can help you discover the many effective treatments available to help in this instance. If you have more questions about bedwetting, please drop them in the question box at the hospital or email askdrbahamas at gmail.com. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away. A check on sports is up next with Ramiko Knowles.